So, this is the update for Horizon 4. Welcome back, Alex. Oh, and it's also summer now, so that's cool. What's going on there? Praise the Datsun. Mm. The Datsun is larder of this game, because it's goddamn awesome. Anyway, yeah, today, I think we're going to go straight into creating a route. Because that does sound awesome. Oh yeah, and uh, last time, I uh, kind of went on a quest since last episode. To uh, unlock that MG. That one. The 6R4. Because, oh my god, that took me forever. One of the races took me, I'm not joking, eight attempts. Those eight attempts took me over half an hour. The rest of it took me ten minutes. But no, one race took me half an hour to complete in the end and actually win the championship. It was, I suppose it was worth it. But yeah, the car I did in was this Golf, which is so much nicer than the Vauxhall, I will admit. Right. Yeah, I suppose I like to find a session. You know what, let's just go to the first race and see what this all route creator is about. Right, where's the nearest race? Now let's go with that. See if I can create anything interesting around there. Let's go to that. Nice turn. Admit it, that was a good turn. Anyway. Yep. Kira Harrison, and she gave me this exclusive quote. You ready? <sighs> I'm really busy with the Horizon Summer Season right now, Scott. I hope this is important. So you heard the lady. New racing program. New summer events. Let's do this. Yeah. Scott, Scott Tyler's, Tyler's a goddamn here. boss. Knowing his way to the facts. A base arena. That's how journalism works, right? In 400 meters. He's too good at his job. We deserve. We don't deserve him. He's a DJ we didn't need. Turn left. Great. Uh, enter event. At your destination. Ooh, create route. It's lagged. I'm doing stuff. As you can hear, nothing's happening. Well, I think my game's broke. Oh, no, it works. Ooh, this I'm going to get into my Subaru. Actually, no. Get into this. Because it's a good car and I need it. You'll see how it all works when I do it, because I have a vague idea. Boy! The fudge? Run to my... Aww. I am sad now. My whole route is gone. <laughs> As in, you know, my uh, livery. Oh, well. All races start from a gantry. Then, you drive. All right. Uh. Place checkpoints at any time by pressing the checkpoint button. Okay. Okay. Make it slightly what? Oh yeah, there's my livery. Nice. Like that. Anyway, yeah. Uh, continue. If you rewind. Any checkpoints you pass. Okay, just uh, not crash into that wall. That would be great. And brake, brake, brake. Oh, nope, rewind. I know I want to go around that corner there. But I have no idea what sort of braking line I need for it. Routes can be circuit or point to point. For point to point, open the menu and select place finish line. For a circuit route, you have to drive back through the start line. Obviously. Okay. There was that one for... Alright. Uh, that should be wide enough. Yeah. No, don't need every one. Okay. And then we go off-road. Oh. Ah, I keep pressing the wrong button. Ah, uh, no, no, yeah. That's weird.
And move those across a bit. Yeah, like that. Alright, so we'll go in there. And then another one here, I suppose. Okay, rewind a bit. Rewind. Oh, no, there goes those checkpoints then. Yeah, right there. So this is how this works. Oh, oh, okay. I think I got an idea. Rewind, rewind. Okay, that's a bit buggy. Okay. Nope, everyone saw that, right? How buggy that was. Oh my god, I'm gonna get this turn right. That's better. Like that. Would be great. And then checkpoint here. One here. Oh yeah, I might need to rewind that a bit. Just for uh, the fact that that was a terrible turn. Maybe not. Put one here for lols. One here. Another one here. And another one. Right, I'm going to put a finish hit. No, here. Yeah. Yes. Right, test drive it. How hard can it be? Alright, so the next thing I just remind remembered, there's a new thing that came to Horizon now as well. Which is a new story, which is cool. And it's this. Which I don't know why I've automatically knocked it, but yeah, it's this. I think it's like Top Gear, but in Horizon. So I don't know. Let's see. British Top Gear, the battle loads. Who would DB5? Great to see you. We're shooting a documentary about car culture in the UK and I need a second driver. You've made a name for yourself, and it would be great to have you aboard. It's simple. You drive, I tell the story. Let's do it. <laughs> That's a beautiful DP5. Not a Bond one, just a regular. Seventy miles an hour. From Aston Martin to McLaren and Bentley. Great Britain is home to over a century of automotive excellence. I'm Rebecca Dawson. 
Welcome to British Racing Green, a documentary celebrating that history. I like the this Aston already. Martin DB5 Vantage was the quintessential grand tourer of the 1960s, combining British engineering and Italian design. Really? Italian? Actually, no, that makes a lot of sense. We can design, but not as well the Italians. Wow, they were good at designing. Especially in the 60s. What's his name? Uh, Lagonda was Italian. Who helped Aston Martin? Pinferraria with Ferrari in the 250s. A lot of Pinferraria designed in Ferraris. Uh, I think he helped some Lamborghini as well. Vantage featured side draft carburettors and a refined camshaft profile, capable of a blistering top speed of. You saw nothing. 162 miles an hour in 1964. <laughs> That's a good point. In the 60s, your average car was doing about, I don't know, 70 miles an hour. The clean lines of Super Legera's bodywork, reclining seats and wool carpets created a car that was luxurious as well as fast. What? What was that? Get back to something oh, on the road. I don't know. Either way, this is a beautiful drive. This is going to make a terrible documentary with this driving. Oh, this is the best. Oh, that was beautiful. Whew, that was a marvellous little trip. Don't this car saying. would form the basis for the DB range, with later cars improving on the design in many ways. But none would ever achieve the sheer iconic perfection of the Vantage. The 200 metres, turn left, turn left. That's a treat, not going to bother. That was terrible. All of its beauty and engineering perfection, only 65 of these beautiful machines would ever be built. If you own one, you own a piece of British history. Feck off, tractor. Thank you. I cannot control this thing. Some oh my god, it's still beautiful though. You know, if you could actually turn, that would be great. Thank 200 you. meters, you will arrive at your destination. Nice. The silver DB5 would be immortalized in half a century of cinema. The classic Aston Martin. Damn right. The most iconic car in the world is the DB5 according to Volt. Oh, wow. But in 2016, a new DB was unveiled heralding the dawn of Aston Martin's second century. The DB11 is the first production turbocharged Aston Martin. But is it a worthy successor to that legacy? Oh god, yeah. Actually, I don't know. Because damn, it's good, but... The short answer is yes. It's bold, responsive and agile. It's perhaps the best GT chassis in the world. And listen to it. I'll just keep it over 100 miles an hour. That's going to be fun. Jesus, I have to have control. But damn, this thing controls. Able to hit 60 miles an hour in 3.5 seconds, the DB11's 5.2 litre twin turbo V12, V12 boasts a top speed of over 200 miles an hour. I'm liking this. This is so good. This new story. Oh my god. The DB11 is not the fastest car in the world, but then it's not trying to be. Yeah, it's really not, because with the handling like that, well, that's just me and bad driving. So I uh, continue. It's sophisticated, effortless luxury. It's an Aston Martin. I don't know about luxury, because I've never actually been in one. But damn, it's good. 
And obviously DB10 was Spectre. Never released that. I was like... The Aston Mine one was a... Oh no! That's not the road. I was about to go into a fence. Why is he rewind so far? Wow! I don't know about the colour though. I prefer silver, I think. That was... The DB11 front strikes channel air to create a virtual spoiler, providing downforce without compromising the car's clean lines. Brilliant. Thank you. It's going to be hard to keep it over 100 around these corners, especially this one. Most importantly, I think, the DB11 proves that Aston Martin is ready for another century of beautiful cars. And I can't wait. You're not wrong. Jesus, that was close. Boom. Beautiful as they are, Aston Martins are only one of many cars made in the United Kingdom. Let's see what else is out there. Three store! Thank you. Continue. I'm definitely doing another one. Oh my god, that was so nice. And the history is pretty accurate as well. I still don't know if it's the su proper... Su oh my god, it is a good success. I'll give it that. But nothing, like I said, nothing as iconic as that DB5. Nothing. A 10,000 noise. Right, time to do another one. That was so good. But yeah, time to do another one. Land Rover. This is shaping up nicely. Time for a change of pace, though. At least at first. The next segment is about Land Rover, and we'll be starting out with the, the type, type three. Thing. Not the first Landy, but you know the first one to go in production, I suppose. Oh god, this thing's slow. So slow. Uh, six. Land Rover, the British sports utility vehicle. But before that, they were actual utility vehicles. Solid, tough trucks, unstoppable over almost any terrain. In 400 meters, turn left. Have to keep okay. Mm. That works. Stop rewinding so far. Land Rover Type 3 marks the point where that shift begins. And we'll be looking at what that meant. Yeet. Recalculating route. Land Thank Rovers you. have taken on almost every task imaginable. They've been wrong. generators, tractors and ambulances. They've brought peace and carried medicines to disaster zones. They've even been buses. What? I mean... Over half a million Series 3s were built, and over 70% of those are still on the road today. They were extensively exported and built under license abroad. Belgium, South Africa, even Australia and New Zealand. With a robust chassis and signature Land Rover engineering, the Type 3 also marked the first time that buyers could choose interior options, like seat box protectors and cubby boxes. Yeah, <laughs> cubby box. I love that word. My God, this thing is so slow. Sixth gear, we're only in eight, nine that miles an hour. Continued. And by 1982, Land Rover were offering the County Spec Type 3. Leisure drivers could choose from such luxuries as all cloth seats, soundproofing, and tinted glass. The trend was increasingly clear, and the future of the Land Rover was starting to take shape. If you squinted, you could already see the shape of the first sports utility vehicle, the Range Rover. While the stock Type 3 would never be particularly fast uphill, there is almost no hill that it couldn't climb. Or down, for that matter, yeah. if you put a proper winch on it. If you watch that Top Gear episode, uh, when they try to recreate that, the dam climbing. Oh, that was fun. He was scared for, Richard was scared for his life, but it was In hilarious. 1978, a Series 3 was custom-built for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. 
It only had 1,892 miles on the clock when it was auctioned into private hands. And it was in perfect condition. It would be. After all, she trained as a mechanic in the 1940s yeah, and will likely remain the only royal able to strip and rebuild an engine. She, as part of the war in 1942, even the Queen got involved to help her country. God save the Queen. And that's why we all love her. Even though we're not quite sure what she does, we still love her. Good old Along Lizzie. With the Range Rover, others would follow. Discovery, Discovery Defender, Defender, and, and the Freelander. Mm -hmm. Each a more sophisticated and enjoyable utility vehicle. But none of them were a replacement for the Type 3. They were a different kind of car. Oh god, yeah, they were. Obviously the biggest one being the Defender. Because that is still being the 90s Defender. Oh my god. Oh wow, that's a bowler. Type 3 was arguably the first sports utility vehicle. <laughs> an evolution of the design that would lead ultimately to this. The bowler Hellcat. The Bowler Nemesis, oh, never mind. an off-road racing vehicle that turned into a production SUV, the Nemesis EXR. Oh, screw me for getting it wrong then. It sports a turbocharged 5-litre Land Rover Jaguar engine, crammed into a carbon fibre chassis with integral roll cage. It even has the grille, headlights and rear lights from a Range Rover. That makes sense. The rear lights, uh, oh yeah, they do! I don't know when this was made, because I, I know the Bola EOX, e, yeah. the other one, the e, EXRS, the EXS or EXR, I can't remember, from Horizon 3, I remember that. I remember loving that car. Alright, I got my 20,000. Could you go? Come on. If you want to see what the Type 3 would be like if it ever stopped doing important things, this is it. <laughs> and it's beautiful. So you have to keep going for craziness. Wasn't that our game, that skill chain? This thing's insane, I will admit, and it handles so nicely. I might actually get one. Yeet. Oh my god, this thing is so good! What do you expect? It's a Land Rover derivative. It's gonna be good. Oh my god! This thing is so nice! I think my batteries have died, so I don't have any vibration or control. Fully independent suspension design and a 415 litre racing fuel cell allows the Nemesis to take on the longest Dakar stages. Oh yeah, it's a Dakar rally! Oh, so that's what this does. Eat. Gotta love this. This is an all terrain supercar. That's the only fair description for this. Yes, she's not but wrong. That's what you get when you build an SUV with Land Rover DNA. Damn right it is. Oh my god. Oh, that wheel just turned. Oh, that was awesome. I will admit. Oh my god. This is getting nostalgic because Britain, my dude. Yes! 8,000, that's not so good. But three star! Not bad. There's some weird music in the background. Give me that three star. Ooh, level 60. Woo! Wheel spin. Woo! I like that blue. Super wheel spin. Please don't mess me up again. Every time I'm on camera, it seems to mess me up. Like that. You see? Actually, no, the aviator shades, I like those. I'm putting those on. The wavy slip-ons. Nah, timpani. Nah. You know, you could have given me a Bentley. Nah. Anyway. That was awesome. Right, barn find. I missed the spring barn find because I'm an idiot. But yeah, summer barn find. Here we come. So yeah. I'll just, uh, where is it? I know it's nearby. Oh my god, I'm so doing more of that. It's around there. Oh, I'm going to meet you at the crossroads. There. Alright, and then we'll search. Because I have no idea where this could be. I'm going to zoom in those trees. Or well, obviously in the trees in general. So, yeah. I'll, uh. Turn around when see you there. Safe to do so. 
There seems to be two people over here. In this part of the woods. So I'm presuming they found something. Sorry, tree. Get out of my way. Is that it? No, 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 it's not. Never mind. Are they all looking for it? Oh my god, they did find it. What legend. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Gyna Civic. Okay, that's... Found it! Nice! Let me put on a dry shirt and I'll be there. Right, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> that, asks, that raises a lot of questions. Summer bomb find. Hey! Yes, lad. Finally got it. Uh, that's the best. PLP 50. Wait, it can't be. That's a PLP 50. I've wanted one of these ever since... Ever since I was small enough to fit in one of these. Come on, help me lift it. <laughs> yeah, <that's all. laughs> I want one of these in real life. I'm not joking. That's so cool. <gasps> yes. I'll wheel it down to the garage and call you soon. Oh, the PLP 50. Obviously, the first time I saw that as well was Top Gear because Top Gear, legendary show. But yeah, I think we have time for a second bomb find at this rate. I think I might do. Because, oh my god, POP50 is awesome. We are going to go do the one near the quarry. This one's been bugging me for a while now. I've been always curious what it is. In 400 meters. Oh yeah, Turn there's left. a bomb find there, which was an ask No, bomb find somewhere else, which was an Aston Martin... V8, uh, no, Lagonda. That was it, DB4 Lagonda. And oh my god, it's beautiful. I have to show you because I still haven't. And then again, I tried to record it and everything just messed up and the recording didn't work. And yeah, it's just nah, it wasn't working. But yeah, got a V8. But that PLP 50, yes, lad. People have already put like. So obviously, that's such a small car. And it's so light. I'm not joking, one person can actually lift it. It's like, I think it's. About 100 kg? No, not 100. In 400 meters, turn Either way, it's light. Right. You don't want to go in the quarry because it's not there. I know that for a fact. So it's up here. Somewhere. In 100 meters, turn right. Right. Problem is, all this area is covered in trees, so I have no idea where to start. Uh, I feel like it'll be somewhere around the area which I'm going towards now. I've not a clue. It must be, right? Bound vantage point up here? Nope, not this way. So it must be this direction now. If I'm looking in the wrong place this whole time, I'll be slightly new. How hard can it be to find? He says. Because he's looking around. In a tree. Hold on. What's this part? Is that... Screw. Ah, oh, no. I got my hose up for that tiny little cottage. Maybe it's on one of these beaten roads, though. Anything? I swear to God, if I'm looking too damn hard for this. Again. Which I know I've done in the past. How hard can this bar- You know what? I'm actually happy. This is the first barn I've actually had to look for. Properly. The other ones were like, I kind of looked for them and it was kind of easy to find them. This one? Nah. I'm actually having quite a challenge here. So I think I'll come back to you when i found it. So, uh, yeah. Right. So. Do you remember how I was looking for the barn in the really densely packed areas? Well, it turns out I'm a complete idiot again for thinking it would be that hard. Because I quickly went in drone mode and was like, hmm, must be somewhere really dense. Nah! Right on the side of the road! Again! I don't know if I'm disappointed or not, either way. Oh yeah, someone joined my, uh, my group. He's a, he's a friend of mine. Did we get there first? Oh, thank you, thank you! On my way! Yeah, you better be. That took me way too long for where it is. That's a... that's a long tail. McLaren F1 long tail. Oh man, I had a poster of one of these on my wall when I was a kid. Still no, do, it's a actually. Lotus. Nan hasn't chucked it out. 
Lotus Elise GT1. I was wrong. Let's get it out of here. I was very wrong. I was close with it. I mean, same sort of era, same sort of design. You can see where I got it from. This is going to be killer when it's oh, yeah. ready. I'll call you. That actually looks sick a little bit though. Ouch. Right. So this guy's in my heroism group, my friend. I don't know where he is right now. Yeah, I know. Where's he gone? Where is he? He's, uh, strange. Disappeared. Oh, well. Well, I think I'll conclude it for now. And, uh, yeah. It's been a good one, actually. I enjoyed that route. I'm going to make so many better routes. Trust me, that route I made there was terrible. So, uh, yeah. Oh, well. It was good while it lasted. I'm going to make a better one later. I'll probably showcase that. Or something. I don't know. Either way. Well, this has been me playing Horizon 4. And yeah, hope you enjoyed. I know I damn enjoyed it. And yeah, see you next time. Bye. Hey, if you don't want it, I'll take it. I keep telling Nan she needs something small to drive down to the shops. She could drive this inside and all the way down the cat food aisle. See, these were built as GT races, but you could convert them to a road spec if you pass the special vehicle approval test. I guess this one never did. Lucky for us here at Horizon, we're exempt.